I understand. Okay. Oh, answer the question with a, okay. You know All mean? right, Where yes. Question and the answer yes, okay. I've done this before. I, I thought you might Okay. Well, my name is Bob DeMaria, and I am now, as of the 30th of June, retired from this august institution. Um, I taught journalism here um, since 1977. My role in mock convention was usually um, I was the one who would arrange to have a crew brought in and, um, and the like, and I served as sort of the um, floor manager of, uh, uh, that would probably be the best, yeah, that would be the best way to put it. Uh, television crew. Usually it was Bill Parks um, and whomever he could drag along. Plus he would bring in uh, Bruce Young and that's where I first met you what was, uh, was then. Um, do, you, do you happen to know Bruce Young or Okay, in um, when Bill Parks and Bruce Young were students in 1980, they shot the first mock convention that I went to, and it was the first one that that they had, and did a considering it was done with uh, one color camera. I, I was impressed. And then um, Tim McCune rewrote it in 1984, and then Bruce Young rewrote Tim's. And then in 88, uh, the, um, the crew then consisted of Jimmy Hodge and Brad Shaw, and they went and shot it, but nothing was ever really done with it. And then in 91, the uh, people in charge came to me and said that they would like to um, do something to really make this mock convention memorable because they had gone through a really uh, two terms of Reagan and one term of uh, Bush 41. So, uh, and they felt like they had a, they had a chance. Um, so I said, well, and we batted around ideas and I said, well, um, I have a good friend, Bill Parks, who is um, up in DC and um, maybe we could talk to him about bringing a crew down. And we did, and they didn't know much, the students didn't know much of what they were doing, and they left it up to me. Um, and we did it, and they brought, uh, they brought Bruce, uh, Bill brought Bruce along with him, and they, they did it. Yes, it was. They had the big, big screen, and I remember Bill Parks just climbing up into the battlements to hook that thing together. It was amazing, and I was concerned for his well-being, but Bill being Bill. So you'd, you'd been to mock conventions before that? I had been at all of the mock conventions. Uh, and 92 was my first really official on the floor. Um, I had a function. Jay, adding that kind of technology, um, did that change the convention as far as 
excitement levels? Oh, of course it did. It was, 92 was a very, very exciting time. First of all, it was a chance for the Democrats to show their stuff. Um, they had uh, just a couple of really big names, Mario Cuomo and Tip O'Neill and Michael Dukakis, to name three, and, and there were others. Uh, but on top of that, uh, Roger Mudd was working for PBS at the time, and Roger had a crew, and they went and followed the Texas delegation around. And um, it was, it also got arranged to have C-SPAN came in, and C-SPAN actually hooked up to our signal. So we were with, with C-SPAN, and we were on C-SPAN, plus we did uh, cable here, a cable cast here, and um, it was just really amazing. And Mud and his crew did a phenomenal job with the kids from the Texas delegation. As far as the students go, your journalism students um, took oh. part yeah. in that. Yes. Oh, that was, and that was a big deal because I was at the time still teaching a television production course. And um, because of that, I had students from uh, my classes who came in and um, operated cameras, who uh, helped with audio, who helped with the character generation. And basically, it was a wonderful experience all the way around, and even for me. So, other than the political science aspects of it, there, would you say, or would you say that there are um, skills that can be learned through the mock convention by the students that they'll carry on? Well, of course there is. I mean, you just take a look at um, one, of the, one of the women uh, named Kathy Garten. She is now Kathy Conanins, Garten Conanins. And she is, with, uh, she is with CNN still because of it. And there are, there are others who uh, got their beginnings there. Uh, and who are doing it. So yes, mock convention is an exciting opportunity for students. So obviously you think mock convention should continue. Oh, I think mock convention and I think televising it should continue. Yes. Yes, even though I'm retired, that doesn't mean it. They need to bring they need to bring television crews in. What um, what moments stand out in your mind as far as you mean from the time I yeah, from the okay well first I remember 1980 when um, uh, Goldwater was was uh, was one of the uh, one of the people who who was there and uh, that's when Goldwater said that I am not a leaker god damn it I am not a leaker he said it he said it a couple of times uh, I also remember in 88 when Bill Clinton did an endless talk. He, he didn't shut up. Clinton talked, I think, for well over an hour, perhaps even longer. Um, uh, 92 will forever uh, stand out in my memory because of the fact that I was up on the, on the podium or on the rostrum, and Cuomo uh, came up, and he he gave his talk, and I stood up afterwards, and I stuck my hand out, and he sh shook my hand, and he looked at me, and he said, "Are you from here?" I said, "Well, originally I'm from Rochester, New York." He said, "What the hell are you doing here?" He said, "You ought to be home." He said, "We need more Democrats," so we had a good laugh at that. Um, Tip O'Neill, I do, I remember him. And the, the funny thing was that my wife, uh, 
who was not my wife then, we were dating. This was her first really big opportunity. And she got to meet Cuomo and she got to meet Tip and she got to meet all those folks. And she thought I hung the moon. Ta-da. So yeah, uh, that was good. I remember, um, I remember 96 because that was the Bob Dole one and, and we got to, I got to, to see and to meet Dole and Dole was just a charming guy. Um, let's see, 2000, you know, after a while they sort of all kind of run together. Um, I remember, <clears throat> let's see, um, the, um, the Obama one where they nominated Hillary, that was the first time that they'd been wrong since who laid the rail. Um, but it was ju just amazing to see all these people. I mean, I got to see um, and, and shake the hand of, uh, of the former Speaker of the House. I mean, despite his politics and mine being, you know, at opposite ends of the uh, spectrum, he's a charmer. He was really wonderful. And that terrific uh, former representative from Oklahoma, J.C. Watts, oh my goodness gracious, the kids wanted to nominate him. And, and, and uh, Bush 41's uh, uh, Dan Quayle, they, his, his vice president. You know, another, and, and they're, yeah, they're politicians. But when, you know, when they take the makeup off or take the microphone down, they're just neat folks. So you think that they actually enjoy themselves when they come here, they don't see this as a... Oh no, they definitely do. Cuomo, Cuomo's remarks uh, were, he said, before the Virginia sun sets, you will nominate the next president of the United States. And people just went crazy. Stood, and, and I mean, you know, the majority of the student body, uh, they're, if they're not Republicans, uh, you know, uh, they don't, whatever. And they, they all stood up. I mean, Cuomo basically got everybody up on their feet to shake hands. Oh, it was goodness. And Tip O'Neill, when they played uh, the theme from Cheers, oh, that was just, it was spectacular. That was another nice thing I had, was I had a hand in picking all the music and, and calling the cues and everything. And, and yeah, it was fun for me and, and the students just, as one of the students told me, it really rocked his world. Let's, let me jump in here real quick. That's interesting, I think, in the, the, the kind of one-to-one -one contact that it gives a student. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, you're right. The the one-on-one the -on -one contact that they have with, with Bill and his crew, the one-to-one -one contact that they have when they actually get a chance to put somebody in, in their viewfinder to do to to do that to see these people and to get that experience how many children st students pardon me for saying children how many students who are 18 19 20 21 years old get a chance to meet these kinds of people in a little sort of small town setting that is Lexington and Rockbridge County. You don't find that ever at, at places unless you're up at Georgetown or, or uh, some place like that. Um, if you were trying to attract speakers in the future, if you were a student trying to get the speaker to come here, what what do you think would attract them to want to come to Washington and be able to talk to people? I think first of all the track record. We've been wrong twice since uh, we had uh, Clinton. We we messed up with her and we messed up with Ted Kennedy. 
in 76, I think, and before that it was who knows when. Uh, so there's that. Also, it's run professionally. You've got people like uh, Bill Conley, for an example. Bill is well known up on the hill and um, Bill, Bill knows these folks. Um, you've got so many students who have come through, who have done, um, who have worked on mock convention that are now up on the hill. In 92, when they were going through getting speakers, I mean, they just mentioned Washington and Lee and people's eyes opened. Let's speak about, um, there have been many like, epic fails. Like, I think there was a year when all those balloons didn't drop down. Is there anything like that that stands <laughs> out in your mind? Um, epic failures? Mm -hmm. Or fun, you know, fun things. Fun things? Mm -hmm. uh, what fun things do I remember? Help me out. Oh God, yes, the, that uh, that guy. And that was uh, that, that was two thousand four. No, it was, this, it was the last one. It was two thousand eight. I'm sorry, yeah. things just sort no, of. Well, I'm sorry, two thousand twelve. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, sure. I mean, he stood up to give a talk, and instead of standing up to give his talk, he he played his guitar and sang, and oh, it was a hoot. It was. Another one was, as I said, Clinton's endless talk. And, you know, after a while, there's a, a, there's a saying that we have in this department. It's called Migo, my eyes glaze over. And after a while, who wants to listen to somebody, no matter how handsome Bill, you know, Bill Clinton supposedly was, I wouldn't know. But, uh, you know, uh, but... Yeah, you had that. You had, uh, you had uh, uh, Goldwater saying, "I'm not a leaker, goddammit, it! I'm not a leaker. I'm not gonna, you know." And they also, um, you know, some of the other just insane things that happen when uh, students get up to nominate their um, their particular um, candidates. And some of the things that that students have uh, have said. Uh, well, um, the the fellow who got up to nominate Tom Harkin lost his place when he was talking and had to had to go had to double back and and do that. And uh, you know, some of it was uh, alcohol induced, and some of it wasn't. You know, a, a lot of it was just there and don't even talk to me about the parades and the stuff there when when they had the 1980 I believe it was when um, yeah when the, they had the, there was that rape in in, uh, in New Bedford Massachusetts and uh, they had uh, in the parade that year the new the uh, the the Massachusetts, uh, yeah, well, the Massachusetts float had a woman s sort of spread legged on a pool table. And I mean, I don't know if you can use that, but God, it was hilarious. I think you may have shot that. Yeah, we should have that. Yeah, somewhere. Did that and, and, uh, in in um, what what in the um, <laughs> when um, uh, when when the former speaker of the house got up to to do his talk, he had on this really nice looking tie that had book books on it, and I turned around and looked, and Lloyd Dobbins was. Uh, was there at the time. Lloyd was uh, with us for a year as a visiting faculty and he had the same tie on. And Lloyd was going, yeah, you got that idea from me. So, I mean, you know, there were just just things like that. What about, um, did you ever have a 
you see the parade this past parade? I did. The Utah float. Remember that? The brides. Tell me? It was all brides. Oh yeah. Yeah. I saw that because uh, because Bruce saw it. I, I am here. So, uh, you know, I was making sure that everything was being set up. And um, who judges the floats? The floats are judged by students. They, the students look at them and there's a committee and then the committee makes the decision as to who has the best float, who has the most original float, who has this, who has that. Yeah, it, and students are there. It is a total student-run operation. So there's no, nobody vets the floats before they get No, there. no well, they do now. Uh, let's put it that way. I mean, the, the, uh, if, uh, if, for an example, students are a, a few sheets to the wind or very, I mean, they can pull a float. But for the most part, it's, you know, devil may care. Go for it. Talk, talk a bit about the student operating aspect. That it's, you know, basically, here's a big event. Okay, kids. Yeah. There's, this, is, this is tradition. They have been doing uh, mock conventions since um, the, uh, the late 19th century, I believe. And it's been student run. Since then, faculty stay away from it. Um, they may bring in uh, a political science teacher to come in and sort of serve as a consultant, but it is all students. It is students from planning. They plan this four years before. At the end of the, at the end of mock convention, if students are thinking, all of the tapes, all of the material, all of everything goes into an archive. And then students, uh, they will come in and there will be three freshmen, or first years, sorry. You get three first year students who are the steering committee. Those, those are the beginnings of it. And for, four, for three and a half years, it is their baby. And, and they run it. They have all of the students come in. They have uh, students actually have to apply for different things. Uh, it, it's, it is an amazing, uh, first of all, it's an amazing opportunity as I've pointed out, but it's also just a, it's just a f phenomenal experience. It's fun. Um, oh, no, I was just thinking about how that's, I mean, we, we've touched on it a couple times, but we can riff a little more on the idea that other places, I mean, there are a few other mock cons. Right, nothing like yeah, this. no. They don't have the kind of experience where, you know, that I'm sure they're much more kind of controlled shows rather than saying to the kids, mm -hmm. you're going to run a political convention. Yeah, and it's not, it's not uh, four days in length like ours is, uh, where it's, uh, you know, you've got the setup, then you've got, uh, you've got two straight days of um, of activities and then they they come in and the students take down mm, for the most part what's there and then the the physical plant crew comes in and and you never know by uh, seven o'clock you never know that there was ever anything there do the conventions each sort of have their own personality I mean, yes Yes, in, uh, uh, was it um, 84 or was it 80, either 84 or 88, where they had the Clydesdales. 
And um, there was an elephant, a Republican elephant. I don't know if he was Republican or not, but I mean, there it was. And you had, you had that. And, and, you know, students have money and they're not afraid to spend it because it, it ain't their money. And that, but it's, it is just exciting to see it. Are some years more enthusiastic than others? Yes. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, not enthusiastic, Jenny. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say enthusiastic, but let's put it this way. There's, there are certain times when the electricity just courses through everybody. When they had Jesse Jackson, for an example, when he came in and the, the gym was standing room only. Uh, whew, you know, here was Jesse, Jesse Jackson, the rock star. They brought him in and that was a big, big, big deal. And you know, there's also the, uh, the spring before when they have their spring kickoff, when they have people like Jesse Jackson and other folks like that and I remember when um, I was there helping when I was able to, uh, to help, and I turn around and there's Mike Allen from Politico. And, you know, Mike comes up, we shook hands and, and everything else, and, and uh, you know, there was Mike, a, a working journalist, and I knew him as a freshman. Yeah, it it uh, it it is from from the formulation through execution. It is just a, a spectacular endeavor. Uh, two more questions. Do they tend? It's it's more than just political science majors or people who are interested in politics. Of course, right? yes. It's it's everybody. Journalists. Um, so you you. You have them. Um, you've got um, different uh, different guys from from uh, different majors who who serve various and sundry roles in mock convention. Nobody said, well, you know, you have to be a political science major because that's definitely not the case. So yeah, you've got you've got all majors from uh, from the science all the way through fine arts and everybody is there if you want to participate you can participate have you ever been to a real political have i uh no um i would think washington and lee would be as exciting and particularly now that uh, they're already decided before the convention. The convention that now is just, you know, there's no smoke-filled rooms and this and that. And I'm not saying ours are smoke-filled rooms, but they do so much. The students do so much research that when they decide on a candidate, 90%, 95% of the time, they're right on the money. Um, do you have any advice for future students to going forth with the mock convention? Pay attention to what has gone on before. Uh, do your do your due diligence. Make your contacts up on the hill. Uh, make it known. Don't, don't go in the semester before mock convention and try and get people. Get people and nail them down at least in the spring before or even before that. Well, the, the first thing I would do, okay, I would come in with some of the um, some of the material that had been produced 
the, for the convention before that. I would also bring in a list of people who have uh, agreed in the past to come. Also, to people who have given money in the past. And it does not necessarily mean because it's a Republican convention or a Democratic convention that you cannot go and, and, and ask. Uh, it's just, you never know. That, that would be my, uh, my advice. My advice is to, to get out there early. And, um, and I mean, even, even a year or so before, start nailing people down. Uh, that type of thing. And don't hesitate to contact people like Bill Connolly for just for an example. No, I, I think I've sort 